Um, I was really proud of our guys' effort tonight. I um, thought we really battled hard, uh, especially after being down, you know, 10 in the first half and, you know, having a lot of adversity to overcome. You know, we've had, obviously, our struggles this season. Um, and, and to have guys step up and give us some contributions and play the way that we did in the second half, calm down offensively, played a much more efficient offensive second half. Uh, it was really good to see. So it was a lot of positives to take away from it. We didn't get the win, but I like the direction that we're at least headed. Other questions for Sean? Sean, what did you feel like you saw um, individually, but also as a team that was working for you in the second half there? Um, I think us getting downhill really, really helped offensively. Um, like Coach Taylor said, we kind of just got a different fight in the second half, uh, defensively rebounding the ball. So, um, and just realize that we can be just as tough as any team we play. So um, that was a big thing, I think, offensively. Us just getting downhill, getting inside the paint um, really helped us as well. So, you know, Sean, just talk to me a little bit about you know the moment that Torrance went down. What was going through your head, and how did you guys adjust um, after he left the court? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Torrance is, as everyone knows, he's kind of the life of our team. So it was obviously sad. We just want to make sure he was OK. Um, but we're in the middle of a dogfight, so it was kind of just next man up. And RJ, RJ Nord really stepped up. Um, we love RJ. He's always stayed ready um, whenever his name's called, and he really stepped up and helped us tonight. Um, but yeah, obviously we were sad for Torrance going down, but um, it's a next man up mentality. So it seems like you y'all played a lot of zone defense tonight. Mm -hmm. and in the second half, you were able to be a little bit more aggressive and kind of you know follow the ball around a little bit. What what changes for you defensively when you pick up those two early fouls in the mm -hmm. first half versus what you were able to kind of do in the second half? Uh, just kind of not playing with my hands as much. Um, first half, I think I just got caught uh, in 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 uh, trying to steal it, uh, trying to be over aggressive a little too much. Um, so just going out there, being solid, like Coach tells me all the time, <coughs> keeping guys in front. I kind of know the two three as well, so. Uh, knowing where I'm supposed to be at, uh, covering the high post and all that stuff. So just being more solid on defense really was my mindset change. Sean, just um, talk to me a little bit about you know starting the game with L.A. Pratt and mm -hmm. what you saw from him, um, especially after Torrance went down. It seemed like he got a lot more minutes, especially mm -hmm. in the second half. So just what you see from L.A. and also you mentioned R.J. Nord. It seemed like those guys got a lot more minutes tonight. So what did you see from them? on uh, both ends of the floor. Yeah, I mean, we're really confident in both of their plays. Um, we think that they can really, really help us. I think they need to help us, um, and they know that, and Coach knows that as well. So just feeding them confidence constantly if they get their name called, um, believing in them, uh, just kind of helping them out with my experience, uh, just little things uh, to do for not turning the ball over, things like that as guards. Uh, so just talking to them constantly, um, keeping their head up, and giving them confidence is a big thing. Kind of conversely, you had Zach coming off the bench tonight. Mm -hmm. What was different about him tonight, and just how much more dangerous is this team when he's seeing the ball go through the net? Yeah, I mean, extremely. Um, Zach is just extremely confident in his shot, and when he's feeling good, he's really, uh, really effective for us. And I think coming off the bench, we kind of miss, miss that spark a little bit, and I think he really provided that for us. Um, and we know Zach is obviously been in a little bit of a slump, but we just need Zach to be confident in Zach. Um, and I think that's the most important thing with him. So, Yeah, so going off that, a lot of times when, when guys come off the bench after starting, that can mess up, you know, mm -hmm. with their confidence and um, just how they're playing. Um, what do you think it is about Zach that allowed him to just, you know, bounce back from being in the starting lineup, coming off the bench, mm -hmm. and then having a great night, especially in the second half. Right. I, I think just because he didn't start, his role doesn't change. Uh, we really believe in Zach and who Zach is, like I just said, whether he starts, whether he plays five minutes, whether he plays 35 minutes. So I think him not starting wasn't a big deal because he knew he was still going to be in the game. He still was going to have an impact on us winning. Um, and just him being confident in himself is obviously what happened tonight. So... Last one from mm -hmm. me. Uh, can you just, what did you see on that uh, UNCG possession in the final minute? Mm -hmm. Inbounding the ball with four seconds left on the shot clock. Just, it was you know, a long three-pointer. Yeah. Just what, what did you see and, and uh, uh, did that impact your mindset going into the final? Right, right. I mean, I was really, um, obviously, under a minute left in the game, we were kind of trying to take away the high post on the side out of bounds. 
Um, so taking away the high post, not letting them get the ball in the middle was a big thing for us coming out of that timeout. And I mean, uh, Langley hit a great shot, a long 30 foot three point shot. I think Coach Taylor and all of our staff would be okay with them shooting that shot whenever the game is. Um, but I mean, it was a tough shot. Uh, obviously he's a really good player. So him making that shot, it just, you know, it was a big one, so. Sean, two quick questions for you. Just talk to me a little bit about the energy in Shar, especially in the second half, yeah. and just how like just helpful that was for you guys to make that that last minute push to yeah. you know potentially take the game to overtime or mm-hmm. ice the game. I think it was huge. I mean, I know I felt it. I'm sure a lot of our other players on the court felt it. Um, just people being in the stadium supporting us is a big thing. I think we all really work hard for that. Um, and obviously, our record doesn't show um, how good we really can be, but um, we put the work in every day. Um, we try to support the community as best as we can, so people coming out to our games is, is, is awesome. Um, that's really what we want, and we just play with a different fire. So. And last thing, you guys got about a week until we're back at it, mm-hmm. Johnson and Wales on the 8th. Uh, what do you guys need to work on in practice? What do you need to go over in the film, film room to be able to you know, get get the season back on track and um, hopefully get a win against JMW. Yeah, I think just the same things coach has been has been harping to us. Um, no matter who we play, whether it's Division One, Division Two, Division it doesn't matter. Um, we need to worry about ourselves, what we need to work on, um, and just keep going day by day. I mean, we haven't started conference yet, so obviously that's a whole nother season. Um, but just keep getting better. Um, every day and worrying about us is a big thing, I think. Questions for questions? Coach, you decided obviously a new starting lineup, um, LA and JB3 for Torrance and Zach. Just talk me through, you know, that decision and what you saw from those guys. Obviously LA more than um, uh, John, but just talk to me a little bit about, you know, what, what went into that decision? Yeah, you know, um, tough decision anytime you make a change to the starting lineup. Uh, that's that's not an easy decision, so I don't take it lightly. Uh, both of those guys, Torrance and Zach, both handled it like pros. Uh, like I knew that they would. Uh, I knew that they'd be ready to go, and, and they were in practice. Uh, they practiced really hard. Torrance was great in practice yesterday, and, and Zach obviously showed what you know what he, what he's made of today in the game. So I was proud of those guys for you know accepting that and, and, and really impacting the game, helping us. And for the guys that you know that did start, John Bowen gets nine rebounds for us, eight defensive. And LA, the stat sheet doesn't necessarily show the impact that he had on the game. Made a big three for us, but I thought he did some good things. What? So it just feels like we're. I'll start over. Were you expecting to still kind of be at a point where you're you're still kind of tinkering with lineups and, and figuring out the combinations? Uh, what impact has have injuries played on on that? And um, just. Where do you feel like the lineup combinations are at this point in the season? Yeah, you know, when you, you lose, you know, we lost Gerald Gillen's Butler, you know, uh, back in October and, you know, lose Dre after a couple games. And obviously he was playing really well. Uh, but, you know, we just have the mentality, next man up. Sean mentioned it. Um, you know, a lot of teams have that mentality that, you know, you, you can't worry about who's not playing. You have to you know, step up when your name is called. So. Um, you know, when that opportunity came, Sam Sherry stepped up. So we've seen Sham, Sam play terrific the past couple of weeks. Um, you know, wasn't as good today. He was good in the first half, but not as good in the second half. But Sam has really stepped up in that absence. And um, now with Torrance going down, you know, early in the game, you know, obviously we got to adjust again. So that's just part of it. You know, injuries are part of the game, unfortunately. Uh, you just do your best to try to overcome it and have guys stay ready. Coach, um... The start of this game was definitely a dog fight, and then mm-hmm. UNCG went on an 11-0 run early in the mm-hmm. first half, and that's very similar to what happened in the high point game earlier this week. Just why do you think for two consecutive games you guys have let up a 10-plus run in the first half, and what can you do to be better on defense and prevent that from happening? Yeah, you know, basketball is a game of runs. You know, um, I guess our, our best run was not very good today. <laughs> In other games, you know, we've done a better job of, of you know, putting together a run, 6-0, 7-0, 8-0. Uh, but the, the game's a game of runs. There's always going to be runs during the game. So uh, it's going to happen. You know, we've got to try to limit it. Uh, we had some live ball turnovers during that segment. 
but they're getting breakaways, so that makes it a lot easier to score. So it's not even our defense. It was just bad offense, so they're getting layups in transition. So um, if we can do a better job taking care of the basketball, we had a bunch of turnovers, had 15 today, only eight assists. After having 16 assists against High Point on 26 field goals. So we need to get that straightened out and, and hopefully be more efficient with our offense. You mentioned the turnovers. I, I wouldn't necessarily characteristic y'all as turnover turnover mm-hmm. prone quite yet, mm-hmm. but it seems like y'all have just been plagued by untimely turnover. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the uh, Sean getting pickpocketed yeah. in the backcourt, yeah. followed by the McKinnon travel. I mean, just how do you cut down on just untimely? Like, yeah. what can you do to like say we definitely don't want to turn over at this time? Yeah, I mean, obviously these guys know they don't want to turn it over. They're never trying to turn it over. Um, you know. It, you got to give credit to your opponent for putting the appropriate amount of pressure on because if they're not pressuring, you know, um, then we don't turn it over. But it's the same thing, you know, against, you know, for us. I mean, there was we three-quarter court press and they threw the ball out of bounds, you know. So, again, turnovers happen. You just try to limit them, try to make the right decisions, try to be in the right spots. Um, and, and really, a lot of times it does come down to execution. Are we in the right spots? Are we doing what we're supposed to be doing at the right time? Um, after the second half, it seemed like there was – you know, like a rejuvenation and energy and eagerness and intensity. What did you guys talk about at halftime to kind of get the guys in that right mindset heading in to the last 20 minutes? Yeah, you know, we just talked about playing with a little bit more tempo offensively. Again, first start for L.A. Pratt, so, I mean, we're, we're starting two freshmen right now. Um, so, again, you talk about some of the mistakes that we're making. Um, you know, we got two freshmen out there and, and a sophomore that, you know, started only a couple games. So... We're still a pretty young team uh, with, with not a lot of experience under our belt, and we're, we're learning on the fly. So um, we just we came out. I think guys settled down. Having Sean back out there playing in the second half obviously also really affected kind of our flow. I'm just interested in learning a little bit more about the zone defense y'all mm-hmm. are playing. Uh, we mm-hmm. talked about you tinkering the starting lineup or just lineup combinations, but what kind of tinkering are you able to do within your zone? Mm-hmm. It, UNC did, didn't kill you from beyond the arc, right. but that short corner was kind of right. hurting you to the right. of what kind of tinkering were you Yeah, doing? Yeah, they, they did a nice job trying to, and they really set the tone early on trying to attack the paint, uh, which is what we thought they would do. Um, you know, uh, Keyshawn Langley is the better three-point shooter, their best three-point shooter that was playing. So, you know, we just we knew we had to try to take away high post, short corner, and they did a good job of working the ball and, and getting it there. So we've got to continue to watch the film, study it. Again, we got some guys that are somewhat inexperienced at the defense, so it, it takes time. So hopefully we can continue to put it together, use our length. And there were some times in the first half where we went for steals and gave up position defensively. So if we can be a little bit more solid defensively, not give up some of those angles where they can get the ball in the paint and attack us at the front of the rim. Coach, I'm obviously a really big second half for Sean, and mm-hmm. John Bowen also was really effective down low. Just talk to me a little bit about having those two guys with you mm-hmm. as your first year as the head coach, because obviously you have a pretty deep-rooted relationship mm-hmm. with both of them um, from your time at Belmont Abbey. So just talk to me a little bit about you know what it's been like being able to reconnect with those guys and how they've been helpful as you're kind of navigating your first year Elon. Yeah, Sean and, and John have both been, you know, really huge. And, you know, John has had, you know, some big moments for us. He played well uh, in the East Tennessee State game. You know, he scored a lot of points that game. Tonight his rebounding was really important for us. Uh, but even, you know, when it's not, when he hasn't played as many minutes, his vocal leadership uh, has been really important in helping some of the younger guys, spending time with the younger guys. Same for Sean Halloran. Uh, again, we've talked about, you know, just starting two freshmen and a sophomore well, having two seniors out there who are more experienced uh, can help us. Um, so having, you know, Sean out there, you know, helping Max. I know he spent a lot of time with Max helping develop his game. So those guys have been uh, invaluable for us in this year uh, because they're really teaching so much on this side. They're great culture guys. Uh, they're everything that we want with, with Elon basketball. Um, and and our, our locker room really wants to win for those guys that are down to their final year. And um, they're playing hard for them, and, and I, I respect and appreciate that. What does this next week look for you all juggling exams and yeah. preparing for Johnson and Wales? Yeah, no, it's a busy week. You know, um, you know, for our guys, it's, it's it's a little bit of a break, but it's not really a break because you know the break is final exams, which you guys all know how tough that is. So it's final exams, it's the preparation for the holidays, 
And oh, by the way, we're getting ready for our last few non-conference games before the start of league play. So a lot to get accomplished here, a lot that we have still to, to get done. So um, we'll be looking forward to getting back to work. That's it. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it.